Okay, so uh, today we are going to look at another model of memory by Badley and Hitch called the working memory model. Now this model is a lot more complex and a lot more um, difficult than the multi-store model um, because there is a lot more detail in terms of the components of working memory. Okay, so we'll outline the model itself, we will divide it all the components and talk about those separately and then we'll have a look at some evaluation points at the end okay so for your exam you need to be able to describe and evaluate the model okay so starting um, really with Badley and Hitch um, they criticized the multi-storm model as being overly simplistic and more descriptive rather than um, explanatory so Badley and Hitch set about trying to produce their own um, model of memory. And they came, out, came up with the working memory model, which explains how short-term memory is organized and how it works. Okay, so the model, the model looks at the mental space. So in other words, the amount of space that is active when our brains are working on a task, okay? A task could be something like playing chess, okay? So in a game of chess, your brain is constantly functioning and working, okay? So the working memory looks at what is happening to our memory and our brains while we are working on a task, and the role of working memory really is to temporarily store information and also use new information at the same time. So we need to, if we are playing a game of chess, we need to remember what the, our opponent's last move was, remember that move, and then decide on our move by using what our opponent has done, if that makes sense. So you are using the information, storing it, but then manipulating it at the same time. Um, so, example here. I want you to try and perform this calculation in your head. 15 times 32. Now, if you are really good at math, then this is um, a, an easy task for you. However, it does require a temporary store of information so a, a normal person would split this calculation up into 10 times 32 and then 5 times 32. Now in order to carry out this calculation, um, you have to carry out 10 times 32, store that in your head and then temporarily store that and then add 5 times 32. So you're manipulating and storing at the same time. So the this is what the function of the working memory model is, is to temporarily store information and to manipulate information, so new incoming information. Okay, so if examples of tasks that we might use our working memory are to remember a phone number, our shopping list, or to do some mental arithmetic calculations. Okay, so we're using our working memory in these tasks. What we're going to go into next is the actual components of the model. So there are three components of the working memory model, which we're going to talk about in detail. Firstly, we've got the visual spatial sketch pad or the VSSP, the central executive and the phonological loop. OK, so we're going to have a look at each of these three components separately. Now, this model is very complex because there are separate components within these components so for example the phonological loop is divided into you know different components so we're going to have a look at that the first part we're going to have a look at is the central executive so the central executive can be seen as like a little man with a supervisory role that decides how the system should function sometimes this little man is called a homunculus in certain textbooks, which just means um, little man in Latin. So the role of the central executive system in our brains is seen as the most important part as 
what it does is controls our attention and coordinates, in other words, decides the actions of the other components. So it can briefly store information, but it does have a limited uh, amount of information that it can store. The central executive is something called modality free. In other words, it can store information from the different senses. So acoustic is obviously what we hear, visuals, what we see, and haptic is the sense of touch. Okay, so really um, the central executive's role is to monitor any incoming information, decide which system is required to process that information, um, and then allocate the tasks to whichever system is required. So it's a little bit like a supervisor or an executive in a company, um, hence why I've chosen that picture to portray the role of the central executive, the little man. Okay, so the second component of working memory model is called the phonological loop. And um, the system, this is the system that deals with the storage of auditory information or sounds. Okay, so the sounds of language, the sounds of the words, the way they are spoken. Okay, so it's all coded acoustically. Um, the phonological loop is divided into two separate components, the phonological store and the articulatory rehearsal system. The phonological store is regarded as the inner ear. In other words, it stores auditory information and it relies on information being coded acoustically according to the sound of it. The phonological store uses sound-based code to store information, but this information can decay after literally two seconds unless it is rehearsed by the, phon the articulatory system. So the input in the phonological store comes from the ears, obviously because that's how we hear music or how we hear sound and words. Um, also, it can input information from long-term memory for example, if I ask you to think about what is your favourite piece of music, you would have to use your phonological store here. And really what, what your mind is kind of doing is sort of just imagine that you have like a book in your, in your head of all the sounds okay, that you've come across. It could be songs, uh, words, language. And you, you sort of almost flicking through those pages in your mind to find that favorite piece of music. Okay, so it's auditory sound and it relies on acoustic encoding. The second is the articulatory rehearsal system, which can be um, described as an inner voice. Now, this system actually rehearses information verbally, so spoken language, and information does last again for two seconds here. This system allows you to mentally rehearse information by repeating it over and over. So in other words, it allows maintenance rehearsal. So repeating sounds and words in a loop as long as we require it, as long as we need it. Okay. If we don't obviously need it, we stop rehearsing it and it will decay. Okay. The third component of the working memory model is called the Visual Spatial Sketchpad or the VSSP. Now the VSSP can be seen as the inner eye. It stores and manipulates information and only visual information. And obviously the input comes from the eyes because obviously that's how we see information. And also retrieval comes from the long term memory. So anything that we have seen in the past, we can sort of dig into our long term memory and um, retrieve that. Imagine an object and picture that object in your mind rotating round so you can see the different angles, the different views. OK, that's one sort of demonstration of our VSSP. Similarly, if somebody asked you for directions to a place, you would have to visualize that in your visual system 
Um, so, so you might sort of say, you know, you have to imagine in your head, can you go walk down the road? When you come to the end of the road, there'll be a post office on your left. Um, take a left at that road, etc. So you, you're almost visualizing it in your mind first and then telling them. So this is your visual spatial sketch pad that you're using in both of these tasks here. Now the VSSP plays an important role. It helps us to keep track of our position when we're moving around. And as we're moving around, what you have to remember is our position is also changing in relation to the objects around us. So the VSSP has to constantly update this information. So for example, you know, if you're walking around the classroom, there are obviously tables and chairs in the classroom. Okay, so you, your VSSP, your visual system is updating when you come in front of a table that you need to turn or if you come in front of a chair, you need to dodge the chair and go around it. Okay, so this is the VSSP that enables us to do that. If, if we didn't have a VSSP, we would be bumping into tables and chairs and, you know, not really knowing where we're going. Okay. So again, you know, these kind of tasks, another task is if I asked you um, how many windows does your house have? Again, this is a task that requires you to sort of dig into your long term memory um, to retrieve that information. OK, because, you know, it's quite difficult for anyone to answer that straight away immediately. You do have to think about it and sort of dig into your VSSP to retrieve that information. OK. So again, really to um, summarize, it's encoding um, information and looking at the visual information and how that's stored and manipulated. Now, um, I said that there were obviously three components of working memory model. Um, in 2000, year 2000, Badley did add a fourth component called the episodic buffer. Um, and this came about as Badley was um, conducting his research on patients with amnesia. Um, and he found that they couldn't really encode um, any new memories. Um, and he found that some of the patients could only repeat back far more details of a story than they could be keeping in the phonological loop. So again, that kind of really led him to, to investigate that there's obviously more going on. Uh, so he proposed a fourth component to the model. And the episodic buffer really explains how um, it sort of binds the information together from all the systems and how it works together. So the phonological loop and the VSSP aims to bind all the information together from the other components of working memory. So it almost puts together all the acoustic, the visual and spatial um, processes into one and maintains information about time. So it records all the events that are happening at the same time. And the episodic buffer also um, enables us to recall information from long-term memory and integrate it into our short-term memory when we obviously need that information. So when somebody asks you um, a question which requires you to think back maybe to your childhood when you were a lot younger, you are accessing your long-term memory, but then bringing that memory from long-term memory into short-term memory. Okay, so um, that's what the episodic buffer does. It sort of looks at all the different components of working memory and sort of combines everything together. Uh, there is a link at the bottom of the slide there, which is a little interview by Baddeley talking about um, the episodic buffer, which is quite a good one. So do click on that and have a look at that. Um, in cognitive psychology, there are some cases which do demonstrate um, models of memory. So this case of KF. So KF in 1970s was um, an individual that had a motorcycle accident, which resulted in uh, brain damage to the left lobe. So you can see the occipital lobe there highlighted in red. The short term memory was damaged in KF, but long term memory was still intact. OK, so no problems there, no um, effects. 
He remembered our words better if they were presented visually as opposed to um, acoustically. Okay. Now, what this case shows is really evidence for working memory that the visual system is separate to the acoustic system. Okay. So again, you know, a good case to use in the exam. It does provide evidence for working memory model. Okay, so really just to summarize, I mean, this diagram is quite good. I'd, I'd ideally draw this out, um, maybe put some of color on there because mine's black and white. So color does help you to remember. So really, you know, all the different components of the working memory model. Okay, and uh, the symbols that are used, obviously the hat symbolizing the executive, the supervisory role of the central executive, making decisions, um, etc. And the visual spatial sketchpad is obviously your inner eye, okay? So processing uh, visual spatial information. The phonological loop, you've got obviously divided into articulatory control system, yeah? And the phonological store, okay? So obviously the symbols that are used to describe those. You've got the episodic buffer, which combines information from all of the systems. And obviously you've got your long-term memory at the bottom there because, you know, all of the uh, components of working memory do sort of dig, sort of dig into the long-term memory to bring it back to short-term memory. All right. So again, good diagram to use really, which summarizes the whole um, working memory model. And then finally is the evaluation. Okay. So the evaluation, um, I'm just going to bring that a bit close. So there. So the evaluation, again, divides into strengths and weaknesses, really. So we've got the strengths and weaknesses there. So the model has been backed up by uh, neuroimaging or brain scans. And there is evidence on brain scans which shows that the acoustic and the visual encoding is actually carried out by different parts of the brain. So, again, you know, we've got research there by Paul Zoo 93 to back that up. Uh, also got experiments, dual task experiments. So dual task experiments are where you are asked to perform two tasks at the same time, basically. So you might be asked to watch something on a TV and then uh, recite something at the same time. Again, um, dual task experiments do provide support that there is separate visual and verbal systems because we can't really carry out um, two tasks simultaneously. Case study by KC, we have already um, spoken about that one. So again, it's evidence uh, for the fact that vis the VSSP does show separate systems for uh, visual and verbal processing. Uh, you could also apply working memory model to help dementia patients by giving them, for example, quiet environment so that background noise doesn't confuse them with dual tasking. So again, good application of the theory there. The model is, however, weaknesses based on lab experiments largely, okay? And obviously lab experiments we know are artificial because they're not carried out in the real environment. So therefore they do lack ecological validity, so it's a problem. Um, the central executive part of the uh, working memory model does lack research. There isn't much clarity and much detail on that part. Therefore, the model does require more research to be carried out. Uh, case studies, we talked about case C is evidence. However, you do still have to remember that case studies are unique, um, unique, really, individuals, aren't they? Therefore, there is a low general generalizability of these cases to the model. Uh, the original model uh, of working memory model did not really explain how the different components interface with each other or with long-term memory. So it's only obviously afterwards that Vadali introduced the episodic buffer. But the original model itself um, didn't really explain that. Okay, so there are obviously, those are some examples of evaluation. There are a lot more you can, you know, evaluate and add to. Have a read of the textbooks um, in your AS psychology book for some further information and the information sheets that I have provided for you. Okay, so really that's a summary of the working memory model.